This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. In this video, what I'd like to do is just take a few minutes to quickly talk about the, really what I feel is the most important uh, piece of data that needs to be transferred uh, when working with pyro sources, and in particular, the, the presets from the pyro shelf. Uh, and I'd also like to do a comparison here between Houdini 16.5 and 17, although most of us are using 17. So if I drop back to Houdini 16, the, the really the main difference here that I found is inside the geometry where we're creating the pyro effect from, we have a fluid source and I have it selected here. And that fluid source has a number of tabs and sub tabs in here. Uh, but we can see that it's it's creating a two volume attributes here, fuel and temperature, but they're considered volume attributes. Now, if I go over to Houdini 17 and I go into the geometry where I've created the pyro effect from, I have something called the pyro source. So this is what is new and has replaced the node from Houdini 16.5. It looks a lot different, but ultimately what it boils down to is it's almost the same thing in that we are just creating two attributes called fuel and temperature instead of two volumes. And these are actually considered point attributes. So if I come up to, actually I might be able to do it here. If I look at the information, uh, here we can see it. Yep, with the information it says four point attributes. Right there is fuel and right there is temperature. And we can add more of these if we want with the little plus signs here. So we can add density um, or you know any, any of the other ones that we have here. Uh, we can do the same thing in Houdini 16. If I jump back to Houdini 16, we could add more attributes here, but these would be volume attributes. But again, they still have the same name. So, you know, fundamentally, or I shouldn't say fundamentally, but um, conceptually, the the two ways of creating pyro from 16.5 and 17 aren't too much different. Uh, we could also add more here, as I said, and if I click on the information for this node, we'll see that it, it isn't, the, the fuel and temperature are not added as point attributes, but as volume attributes, so they're right here. So structurally, it's a little different, but the most important thing that I found is that we need to keep track of what these names are, these, this is the data that's coming out of the geometry. So in 16.5, it's creating two attributes known as fuel and temperature, and they're being created as a volume. And in Houdini 17, it's generating two attributes and they're fuel and temperature, but they are point attributes. And why this is important is because when you create a pyro effect, it creates so many nodes, we can just get lost in them. Um, but again, if what we wanna do here is we wanna track this data. This is what is being fed into the DOP simulation. So I'm gonna track that here. I'm just gonna go with Houdini 17 now since that's what most of us are using. But if I come up one level and I go into the uh, pyro sim right here, and then I take a look at my volume source, we can see that there is where that data is coming in. It's taking fuel from that source, my geometry, and it's feeding it into the target field called fuel. And I also have one here, my volume source for temperature. It's bringing in the temperature attribute and feeding it into the temperature target field. Now, the reason this is important is because we can manipulate these. If I wanted to, I could flip-flop these. I could put temperature into fuel and fuel into temperature, and I might get a slightly different result because ultimately what we can do is we can manipulate these fields. And this this is the identical or, or fairly similar whether we're working in 16 or 17. Again, it's just about making sure we name the attribute field properly and then feed it into the proper field here in the DOP network. So if I wanted to, I could come back over here to my sphere object and I could use all kinds of additional tools and nodes to generate this fuel attribute and this temperature attribute. I could do it with VB, or VDBs. Am I saying that right? Yep, v, I have to look at it here. 
uh, it's cut off in the video. VDBs, <laughs> VDBs, particles, uh, anything. We, we, we just need to make sure that once we generate that data, we feed it out of there with the appropriate attribute, either fuel temperature or any combination of these others, and then feed that into our DOP network. So as I was learning pyro a couple of years ago, this is this was the one area that kind of stumped me at first because there's just so many attributes in there. So as we pointed out in class, uh, that's the, the foundation of a pyro sim is passing those particular pieces of data back and forth between the geometry and the DOP network. So as long as you know what those are and where they come from and where they're going, then you have a better chance of understanding and manipulating the uh, pyro networks. So I hope that helps a little bit, just sort of a tip and trick in terms of how to keep yourself focused on all of this massive amounts of data and nodes that are created when we, when we generate a pyro sim from the shelf menu.